back to the Stringing It Together podcast. I am Becky, your host, coming to you from Dortmund, Germany, where I currently live with my two cats. <laughs> if you're a returning viewer, you will know that this is a different location for me, quite a different one. I uh, formerly was living in Frankfurt, Germany, and had to very suddenly move for a job change. The past month and a half, almost two months now, have just been completely crazy. I can't even begin. Oh, it's been it's been a trip. So I obviously have not been podcasting during this transition, and I haven't been doing a whole lot of making either. But someone is scratching the new couch. Can we not? Um, yeah, I haven't been doing very much making. I haven't had the time, and I haven't had the will. <laughs> to be honest, it's just been such an overwhelming time. Um, I will talk a little bit more about the move and everything that's been going on later at the end of the episode, but yeah, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, and by the way, that's where I'm most active on the internet, so you can find me there at Soprano Knits. I'm also on Ravelry as Soprano Knits. Uh, we have a group for the podcast on Ravelry. If you follow me there, uh, and especially if you watch my Instagram stories, you've probably seen some of the crazy adventures that I've been through trying to put an apartment together by myself. Um, since I moved from the U.S., I really didn't have any furniture, and I had to put a kitchen together. I mean, it's just been really, really intense. Um, but I'm happy that things are finally <laughs> feeling a little bit settled, and that I'm feeling like knitting again, which is really awesome. So, um, let's get started. <laughs> I talked about these in the last podcast, I believe, oh man, I should have gone back and checked, um, but I believe they weren't released yet. No, they've definitely been released since I moved, right? Shows how much I remember. Um, but the newest pattern that was published are these. Um, these are my Azulejo socks, which I designed from Retrosario Mondin sock yarn that I bought in Lisbon. And the pattern itself is inspired by Lisbon. Um, Azulejo means uh, tiles. And this textured pattern, which I'm not sure if you can see very well from back there, but I will be popping in some pattern photos, is reminiscent of tiles. And um, yeah, if you haven't seen pictures of Lisbon or Portugal and these beautiful tile walls that are literally everywhere, um, you need to go look at some pictures and then <laughs> put it on your to visit list because it's so beautiful. So yeah, it's up here and it's also going across the foot and there's also a sort of faux pico edge here at the top and um, that kind of reminded me of all the terracotta roofs everywhere and yeah, so if you missed it because I've been gone for so long, I do just want to mention that those are up on Ravelry to be purchased. Um, I will put the link to my Ravelry store below. Um, and I have another pattern that you guys haven't seen at all because I've been working on it in the, um, God, I'm starting to speak German, in the time in between when I've seen you last. Um, and these take a little bit of prefacing, I suppose. <laughs> these are the Applewood mitts. And I have these on my beautiful, beautiful uh, mitten sock blockers, cell blue mitten blockers by my friend Patricia, who's P. Fortune, and has the nitography um, shop and podcast and everything amazing. These are so beautiful, and I will definitely link to her shop as well. Anyway, <laughs> the, the pattern is a fingerless mitt pattern, um, fingerless and thumbless, which was on purpose because you just have more range of motion in these and for instance you can still knit with them on awesome so this is just a really fun textured pattern and these will be released tomorrow however you will not be able to find them on ravelry what you guys there's a new kid in town if you haven't heard about it it is called the making things app and it's Awesome. So they approached me a couple of months ago and sent me a message asking if I would be interested in having my designs on their app and just offering more information. And I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I'll get more information. And they set up a Skype 
interview actually with the um, CEO, Megan. And at first, when I just read about it, I was thinking, okay, I don't know about this. Because basically the concept is that it's sort of the Netflix of knitting and crochet patterns. So there's a monthly subscription fee, and then you have access to all of the patterns on the platform. Um, so you can look at all of them, which is a cool concept, totally. And I knew that, but I was thinking, as a designer, I don't know. Um, <laughs> like, how is that? How am I going to get paid for that? Is it going to be worth it? Is it just going to be sort of like open access to all of my patterns and I'll sort of lose some of my rights over them? Um, but really what I learned is that they're really designing it to help designers, and I think it's actually going to be a more predictable and steady source of income for us, especially those of us who aren't the super big name designers, um, who are still putting in the same amount of time and effort into all of our patterns, but don't get very much return on them. I mean, I've had some patterns that I barely broke even on just financially because of the tech editing, which is a paid service, but is really, really, really important um, to make sure that your patterns are just the highest quality possible. Anyway, <laughs> so I was really skeptical about it, and as soon as I talked to Megan, I was like, I am on board. Um, I could just tell that they're coming at this from the right place, um, and that they really, really want to support designers, but they really want to support makers as well. And at the point where I joined in with them, they already had the app um, in beta testing, and they were getting feedback from all of the people that were testing the app about what works and what doesn't work, and they're going to continue that feedback, and they're continuing to expand it. But it officially launches tomorrow. I've also been working with them behind the scenes, which um, sort of happened spontaneously. At the time that I had this interview, I was unemployed, which has changed. Um, but I've kept working with them because I've really enjoyed it, and everyone that's involved in this project is so positive and welcoming, and I don't know, it's just like, I just get good vibes from the whole thing, it's really amazing. So, um, yeah, so I'm so excited about it that I wanted to um, design a pattern for the launch, and that's where these came about. I kind of can't believe with everything else that I pulled it off, but I did. They've even been tested. Knit and tech edited, of course. Um, yeah, so the Apple admits will be exclusive to making things for the first month. Um, all of my other self-published patterns that I have the full rights to uh, will be on the platform. Um, if you do subscribe tomorrow, you might not see 100% of my patterns there. They have all been processed. Um, but there are so many, so many patterns by so many awesome designers going up at once that um, They'll be coming probably in the next week that 100% of my patterns will be there. But here they are. I really love them. I've gotten really great feedback on Instagram, so I hope you guys like them too. And I'm planning on running a cap for them, um, which is really exciting. Yay! So if you guys want to check out Making Things, it launches on the 30th, which might be today when you see this. <laughs> I'm putting a link in the down bar. It'll take you to my designer page, and then from there you can click either on the arrow on the left or the um, magnifying glass to take you to like search everything, and you can also subscribe through there. If you first visit the site through my link, um, they're like tracking things with cookies, um, I will get a little bonus <laughs> for referring you guys. And um, I mean, of course, if you end up using that link, I would really appreciate it. It doesn't cost anything extra for you, but it's another um, way for you to support me if you wish. Otherwise, um, yeah, I really recommend using at least a designer's link because it's just another way to support them. Why not? <laughs> so I'm really, really excited about that. Um, there are all these tools in there. I could talk about it for a long time, but some of the main tools that are really awesome are there are highlighters so you can mark your place in the written and in charted instructions. There are, I believe, five row counters, and right now they're color coded, but soon you'll be able to label them. So you can label the different things that you're keeping track of. Um, what I love is there's a timer automatically built in that keeps track of how much time you're looking at the pattern in the app. So when people ask us questions like, how long did it take you to knit that? We'll be able to tell them, which is super cool. Um, there's they're making a lot of super high quality tutorials, um, and you guys, there's going to be live support in the app. 
So if you run into a problem, instead of the usual route of having to email the designer and maybe never getting a response, you can ask a knitter who's on, on there, like waiting to help you. And I think that that is so cool and it's really, really gonna help beginners as well. And I, yeah, I just think that this platform is great for all of us, but you know, if our friends wanna learn to knit, giving them this resource and referring them to it is so awesome. It's really awesome. I could talk about it for a while, but we're going to move on. Um, but yeah, that's all going to be linked below, like I said. Oh, and by the way, I am wearing my piece of silver sweater, which I believe is a pattern by Vera Valmacki, believe. And it was in the first Lion Magazine. <laughs> um, I believe so. And I did it out of um, Love Anime. Merino singles, and I love it, and I really want to knit another one. That's what's up. Okay, so like I said, I don't really have that much to share with you, but I will share what I have. Um, since I really have not had that much energy at all to be knitting and stuff, I did pull out my long neglected crochet blanket. <laughs> um, which I don't think I've showed you guys in a long time. It's not that interesting, but it's pretty. Da, 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 da. So here's where it is. It's super, super long. I mean, it's, I think it's like, I don't know, 170 centimeters wide or something insane like that. Because I was, I chained on, I have no idea what the number is, but I chained on enough stitches so that it would be wide enough to go over my bed but I'm not going to use it for my bed. I made the decision, like, this is taking forever because I'm doing it out of fingering my yarn. And also, I mean, I'm using up so many scraps and it's super, like, rainbow fabulousness. But that's not really my aesthetic, is to have this crazy rainbow thing. So I'm just going to use it as, like, a couch throw and something to snuggle up in and... I'm not going to have it be like a bedspread or anything like that. Plus the cats would destroy it, I think. So I had this plan, some of you might remember, of doing the whole, this whole middle section in um, neutrals. I started doing that actually and then I like ripped it out because I just thought I, that's going to look weird now that I'm not going to make it this huge thing. So I'm just going to keep going until it's like an acceptable size for a blanket. It's still going to take me a really long time because I would say it takes me over an hour to just do one row <laughs> so yeah but it has been getting some love and it doubles as a blanket while i'm working on it which is really nice um and whenever i need something just super mindless it's a relaxing thing to do so i've been enjoying that and now kitwan is playing with this um i started a project i was going to make more slippers because i knit a pair of slippers before and I think I left them in the US. I have no idea what happened to them. Um, so I really need a new pair of slippers. And I decided to make them out of Let Lopey. Let me see, do I have all the colors in here? Um, this, for the soles, which is the only part that I've started, I'm using this dark gray, because then if it gets dirty, it doesn't matter, right? It's on the floor. And then I was going to marl, because um, the pattern is, I'm super prepared, I didn't make any notes today. Oh, I can see it. They're, oh, they're called the Malabrigo Loafers pattern. I'll put the designer on the screen, I can't remember. Um, but I, they're used with two um, strands of worsted weight, held double, but it's really more of an air weight, so I'm using, I'm using this. And I was going to marl these two colors together for the body, but I'm actually thinking of changing my mind and doing this and white, uh, which I already, which I also have. So yeah, I want to get back to these. I don't know why I just like totally forgot about them until I was podcasting and I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I did start something else. Um, so I'll keep you updated on those. And the other thing I've been working on is this shawl design pattern that I have shared with you before. I've had some issues with it. I think I'm back on track now, although there will be some frogging involved and I'm a little bit worried about my yarn, having enough yarn, because it's crazy. So, uh, okay, 
it's a little hard to show because <laughs> you knit it in two pieces. Um, but I will try to show you. Um, it's mostly garter stitch, so it was really intended to be a very um, potato chippy, meditative knit. Um, but with some really cool results, I think. Obviously, I'm biased. But yeah, so I hope it's not getting totally blown out. It's a bit hard to see. I, I filmed this with my 50 millimeter lens, so I have to put the camera really far away from me because um, it's a very, you can't zoom with this lens and it's a very close lens, <laughs> so I have to put it far away. Um, so it's hard for me to see in the screen always what you can see. Um, but yeah, it starts with this tip. And then currently I'm working on, I sort of call it a wing. And yeah, I'm almost done with this side of the wing. Uh, and this is the second one I've knit. I have a whole other piece <laughs> that's on a holder right now, a whole other piece here, and a whole wing. But the wing wasn't working out how I expected. I should have. I don't know where it is. I should have grabbed the swatch. I made a baby swatch of the shape of this shawl that I wanted it to be in, and it worked out. And then when I knit it and made this wing, it um, didn't work out, because this is supposed to be almost straight across. And um, I did that using short rows, but it's really easy. No one should be afraid of short rows. It's super intuitive um, and memorizable. Like You do it once, and you're like, got it, and then you just do the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, but basically the proportion worked on my mini swatch, and then when I did this, it was totally off. So I just put it on hold because I wanted to remember sort of what it looked like, and I tried a different proportion. And this time, um, I still have a bit more to do up here, but if you can tell the difference, it's a lot bigger. So I think it's going to work. <laughs> I hope so. It's still a lot more knitting. Um, the yarn, by the way, is Knit Craft and Knittery from my friend Morgan. I don't know if you watch this, but if you do, hi Morgan. Um, she's an awesome dyer and she has beautiful yarn and this is a non-superwash merino. Oh, it's so dreamy, it's so soft. I can't believe it's not superwash, you guys. It's great. Um, so yeah, it kind of looks like a stingray or something. I like it. So it's gonna be a blanket. I mean, it's a big, it's a big thing, but I, if it works, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> but this has definitely been one of those things where I had this idea and I really liked the idea and getting the idea to work in real life is just not as simple as I thought. <laughs> so that's been getting a lot of love too because um, that's also pretty mindless. You have to keep track of which one goes where. Okay. And that's really all I've been working on um, except for I've been doing some swatching for um, my sweater design. That terrifies me. But... Um, yeah, I think I'm finally getting back the brain space to be able to work on that <laughs> and figure out all the masks and everything. And I sat down and like sketched out what I want to do again last night and that kind of relit the fire for me of like, oh my God, I want this sweater. So that's an adventure, but I'm excited about it. So that is really it for the making. I have not been sewing. <laughs> no, that is way too involved. Um, but I'm looking forward to get back, getting back to sewing soon. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, I don't, uh, <laughs> even talking about the move sounds kind of overwhelming. I don't want to go into too much detail, um, but I am planning on some point, if you guys would be interested in making a video that's sort of like an apartment tour, kind of talking about where I sourced a bunch of the things, because... I've been thinking about that a lot. I was able to get a lot of things secondhand and used. And um, yeah, I don't know, trying to do this on a really tight budget and moving obviously is super expensive. Plus moving to a city where I know literally no one and I wasn't allowed to work at the beginning. Um, they wanted me to start working right away but I had so many problems with my visa um, and it took a lot longer than I thought so I didn't get to meet any of my colleagues. I don't have a driver's license in Germany yet, so I couldn't move anything. <laughs> so trying to furnish an apartment on a budget and trying to get some secondhand things was kind of a nightmare. Um, 
but yeah, anyway, I, I've been thinking about it a lot and I think it would be kind of cool to show you guys, um, especially because I had to do something about the kitchen. So for those of you who don't know, uh, in Germany, it's super normal to rent an apartment where the kitchen, I mean, there's a room for the kitchen, but it's completely empty. There's nothing in there. There's no cabinets, there's no appliances, nothing, and that's your job to furnish it. That's normal. Uh, the last apartment I lived in, I had a roommate who had already been living there, so she had already done that. That wasn't a problem, but here I had to do it myself. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It was an adventure, but I'm really, really proud of how it turned out, and yeah, I think it's kind of cool. So I'll probably be showing some of you, well, whoever wants to watch it, <laughs> some of that um, in the future. But yeah, like I said, it's been a crazy time. The visa issues were really frustrating. I had to go back and forth to Frankfurt. Eventually, I had to go like wait outside the immigration office in Frankfurt. I got there at 3 in the morning because it's so busy that if you don't have an appointment, which obviously I didn't, getting this job at the last minute, um, you have to go wait for a waiting number. So I went at 3. I was the 20th person there. There had been people sleeping in sleeping bags outside all night, and I had the very last waiting number. I mean, being an immigrant is crazy, y'all. It's crazy. Um, so that was kind of financially difficult as well that I wasn't able to start working as early as I had hoped. Um, then I missed the premiere and I didn't get to do any rehearsals. So once I started working, I jumped into it, but I had never rehearsed it before and just learned it on my own. Um, so that has been interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, it's just been, it's been really nuts, but now I mean I have most of the nuts and bolts furniture. I still need some things, and there's still plenty of projects that I have to do around here. But I'm definitely feeling a bit more settled, and the colleagues that I have met are really really nice, and um, the girls in my dressing room are awesome. There are a lot of knitters and crocheters in the bunch, so that's really great. Um, I got audited by the German tax office. So I didn't need that to happen. Um, I misfueled my colleague's car and put gasoline in a diesel car because I checked the manual and it said gasoline, but it took diesel. And luckily it didn't wreck their engine, but that was a very expensive fix. <laughs> and a financial burden I didn't need on top of the move. It's just been crazy. Like, and it's been crazy. I'm going to stop saying that. Um, but yeah, a lot of you have sent me kind messages and have been following along on Instagram, so thank you for all of that, it's helped a lot. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. I'm excited to sort of just get back into my old making habits and um, get going and be here more regularly, hopefully, and checking in with you guys and get back to designing, all that good stuff. So, I'm going to leave you there. Uh, yeah, reminder that these will be on Making Things tomorrow and I would love it if you're interested in that app at all if you would use my link below shameless plug <laughs> and um, yeah I think that's it guys so I hope you have a really great rest of your week and I will talk to you hopefully soon